today we are going to talk about exploring scratch. So this is Sylvia Jerome from Miami. With me I have Belding and Chen also from Miami. And Belden and Wendy from my own team. So I'm sorry we're starting late. We've had some technical issues, but we are ready now. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, so we're going to talk about exploring Scratch. And I'm going to handle three things to me. So one, what is Scratch and what it can do for us. What you can be able to do with Scratch. Secondly, how you can be able to step by step sequence your program when working with Scratch, and lastly, debugging. So I'm going to share a few examples of Scratch projects that have been able, we've been able to create or people have created already so that you can learn from them and also be able to, to see what you can do with them. So I'm going to share one project which is a, a game in this game just a minute i'm loading the game so it gives you an opportunity to it asks questions then it gives you options to choose the questions and then from there you're going to learn from it. It's just an example of a project that has been created using Scratch. So let me share with you so that you're able to see. So it's coming up slowly. So there it is, our game. So in this, if I'm going to play, let me play it. Just a little bit so that you guys are able to see. So it gives an opportunity to... So these are examples of when you talk about Scratch and be able to give you, you can be able to create games with Scratch. That is what you mean. That already people are working on games, so it is very possible and you can be able to create games using Scratch or even story animation. So I'll keep sharing different projects as we move on. So first of before I go back there, I'm hearing you guys cannot hear me. Hello. 
Hello? I hope you can hear me. Everyone can hear me right now. So as I was saying, we, we are discussing exploring Scratch. So I'm assuming all of you have been able to install the Scratch application and at least you've looked at it in one way or the other. I'm just going to just for those who have not understood every part of it. So I will start with the uppermost level, the blue line. So in this In this line, we have the menu where we have the file, edit, tutorials. If you want to learn more from others who have already worked with Scratch before, you can go to tutorials. And then on the leftmost line, we have what we call the blocks, the code blocks. As you can see them, they are labeled in different colors and different writing. So they have a description and the color also identifies them. We have the motion block, the looks block, the sound blocks, the event blocks, the control, sensing, operators, variables, and my block. And lastly, on for my block, it allows you to create a block. For example, if you're working on a project and maybe you want to, to your cut maybe to do something or your sprite to do something and it is not you cannot find a block that will do that function. It is always possible for you to create your own block and instruct it on exactly what you want it to do. Then down here, as I click, we have these what we call extensions. They give you more functionality. For example, if you want, instead of your sprite just saying in text, hello, you can make it talk and say the words hello. So you can use the text to speech so that it can talk. So we have these extensions. You can always add, add them into your Scratch if you need them. Those who are working with robotics, you can use the Lego Milestone to be able to combine it with your Scratch. You can also, if you need translation, as you all know that there's a Swahili version of Scratch. So you can use the translation in case you want to use the Swahili version and it can be able to do that for you. And then next, from the blocks, we have what we call this, the white space here. This is the working space. This is where you drag and place your blocks, like you can see me doing. So that is, this is the working space. And then lastly, where we have the cut, this is the stage where the action takes place. Let me go back here where as you can see me clicking, we have what we call the costumes. So the costumes are the different postures or looks of your sprite or your backdrop. For example, in my stage, I have the cat and we can see the cat has two costumes. So it has one posture looking like that and another one looking, changing the, the legs position. So the costumes gives you the ability to see or to work with the different looks, postures, or views of a sprite or a backdrop. Then lastly, we have the sounds. If you, if you want to add sound, if you want to add music, if you want to add any form of sound into Scratch, you go to the sound area. And you can be able to edit your sound. If you want it to move faster, you deal with it. You make it move faster. If you want it slow, if you want it to fade, if you don't want it so loud, you can reduce it. You can make it soft so that if you want it louder, you can always make it loud. For example, if you want a specific part of your audio, maybe you recorded yourself and there are place error, spaces you've made error and you want to remove those spaces. You just go to trim and be able to get rid of those different places. So then the other thing I would want us to look at. So on this other side where we have the stage, below we have 
where it's written the sprite that gives you a chance to rename your sprite for example i can rename my mine into a cat because it's a cat sprite that i have on the stage and then we have the direction in form of x and y i believe this is known especially in mathematics the directions across or vertically and horizontal that is when we use the x and the y axis and then we can hide or show our sprites or our backdrop that one is made possible by the show for example if i click on the show if i put on the i click on the eye the sprite is visible if i click on the crossed eye the sprite disappears so with that we are able to, we are able to manipulate our sprites for example you want the sprite to move if you're creating a story and in stage one you have a cat and a rat talking and then in the next stage you want maybe a dog and a cat talking so you want the cat the rat to disappear so you can always hide the rat from your scene and then the size we normally we sometimes we need to manipulate our sprites make them bigger or make them smaller so you just work on the size you either increase it or reduce it depending on what you want and then lastly there we have what we have we call the directions and these directions are mostly used when you're dealing with movement of our sprites if we want our for example if i want my cat to move from forward and backwards i will use the direction of the two arrows facing each other the left and right so that the cat is able to move forward and backward if i use the round arrow all round my cat will move in a turning direction such that it will be turning in terms of rotation like from 0 to 360 degrees that way but if i use the two arrows it will be turning in form of left and right then below here where it's written the sprites choose a sprite as you can see we have different elements so the first one is for uploading your sprite for example if you want to create something to do with your school you can go out take photos of your school take photos of your friends take photos of the different items you need in your story or your animation and then you upload them you upload them such that you're able to bring them into you add them into your list of sprites and then the next one is a surprise that one just gives you different sprites and then we have the third one which is paint so when you click on paint it allows you to draw very good with drawing please take advantage of this and be able to create your own characters and be able to use them so it is very possible for you to draw your characters and use them and then you've interacted with this and we have the different sprites there with us so i'll not focus much on that then next from the sprites we have the back the stage which is the which has the backdrops and it is the same thing with the backdrops you can be able to upload your own image of your class of your school environment all that you can be able to paint your own if you if you're good with that please do that then you can be able to choose from a variety of what you've been given so i'll also yeah i think most of you have explored that so i'll not focus much on that so my next other issue before I share another project that has been done is when you're working with the blocks so one thing i would like you to do once you've decided on you you want to create a project using scratch as we we had talked in last week session the other the first week sessions about problem identification so once you've identified your problem very well and you've stated it 
sit down and do what we call a design or think critically and uh, and decide what do you want to happen in first step the next step what do you want it to happen for example if it is a story there must be the first stage of the story then the second plot of the story so you need to identify what is happening in the first stage if we are so i'm on my cut if i'm on this cut so you decide what you're going to to do on your first stage so for example if i'm doing a story of a cat and a mouse i want to know the first stage they are going to be maybe in the kitchen discussing one two three things so once you have all those steps arranged so you come and decide which blocks you're going to need if it is for movement which blocks how do you want to move in what direction how do you want to move up and down forward backwards turning around so you need to know all those you identify the blocks that you're going to use so that you you be able to go direct into a project without struggling because you'll have done a lot in the design in the designing and making of decision then if you're dealing with sounds try come up use the sounds that have been given in scratch and if it is not the sounds that have been given in scratch you can create your own audios or your own music and when you use someone else music remember there's always the copyright issues so please always remember to mention that person in your work so that they don't feel like you stole their music to be able to create your own content to be able to create your own content so when you use someone else con music please mention them in in your work when when you for example if you create a whole animation and in that animation you use for example i can give an example of maybe a kenyan musician please mention them in the project to acknowledge them yes because remember you, there are copyright issues so if you use people's music without permission you might end up in trouble so keep that in mind please when you're working with sounds so the best way is to use free music or create your own content your own music or your own audios for use another thing when working with blocks always arrange your blocks systematically and make sure that the blocks click on each other like you can see my blocks for example this one is out hanging on alone that means it cannot function properly so for it to function i must put it somewhere so that it can work well if it is this block i need to stack it with this other one so ensure you arrange your blocks systematically so that they are able to achieve what you the desired result another thing i would like to share with you most of the time when you're working you'll come across what we call bugs or errors in coding for example if i want my cat to move forward right let me do it let me demonstrate that so i want my cat to be able to move from where it is to to move forward so i can have my cat move forward i tell it to move forward when i click the flag it moves forward and then when i click the space bar i want it to move but this time i want it to move coming back from where it was from where it has it has reached so this side i'll put a negative so that it comes back and then this side i put a positive so that it goes forward so we can look at this So if I click on this the cat is moving forward as you can see but when I click on the space the cat is moving backwards but it is in the upside down and I don't want it to be upside down so this in the, this we call it an error or a bug it is not working as we expected it to work so when you're dealing with scratch you expect to encounter what we call bugs or errors especially when you when you're coding or when you're creating your project so the most important thing is to ask yourself a few questions 
Let me share the questions with you. So when you when you get bugs or errors, so you need to investigate and find why is the problem? What is the problem? So like in my case, the example we're doing, my cat is upside down. So how did I identify the problem? Because I wanted it to move, but not upside down. So that's why I'm finding it a problem, the fact that the cat is upside down. Then how do I fix the problem? So I need to ask myself, why is my cat upside down? So that I can be able to fix that problem. So in coding, as I've said, especially in Scratch, you're going to encounter a lot of errors, especially when you're working with the big projects that you guys are working on. So please don't get discouraged. Always find the problem and then try to solve the problem. Why is it working that way? And then I can give you three strategies on solving problems. So one, if you're working on a block and that block is giving you problems, identify working with it, it is not working as you wanted it to work. You can always search online and see what the block, what other people have been able to do with that block. And then maybe you can borrow ideas from there. Another thing, you can try something else we always say there are many ways of solving a problem so the if for example you're trying to move from one place to another and you're using the block move and it is not working for your case you can use glide or you can use other option still for moving so there are many ways of killing a rat so the same way in scratch you can always solve the same problem using other different ways apart from what problem the the way the method you had started using and lastly ask a friend and help a friend if you're having trouble go to your other another team in your club and ask them how have you been able to work out this or how can i be able to work out this maybe they have an idea that you're not able to see and they'll be able to help you so ask your friend or Help your friend if they ask for help so that you're able to work with one another. So as I'm winding up, please, I'm opening this so that we can have questions. In case you have any question in Scratch, I know you've already identified the problems you want to solve using Scratch. Please share with them so that we discuss and help you make a way forward because I'm almost winding up actually. As I share a few projects that have been done in Scratch, please ask questions in the chat option. box several projects can be designed in scratch the calculator project we have it there and uh, that one is someone like designing to solve the problems that we encounter during math if you want to calculate something you can make the calculator you don't have to be the one buying the calculator for how long are we going to be consumers so we also can be producers of the knowledge that you want to utilize in our in our classes look around you the community what is the problem that the community is facing remember we are solving real world problems and this time we are using coding or rather we are using the computer or technology as a solution to these problems so this is really possible scratch is so easy to learn if you have any problems you can just uh, talk to any member of the team and we'll have you assisted 
So if you have any problem, you can use the chat option at the far right of your screen. Just chat your question or any inquiry that you have and we'll just get we'll get back to you. Okay, we're also encouraging you, please keep sharing the, the, once you come up, you've identified your problems that you want to solve, please share with us so that we help you in starting off the project because we're expecting that you, you're already starting to work on the project. Let us know where we can help so that we assign you someone to help with your project when you're working on it anytime when you're available. So please share those ideas with us so that we assign you someone, an expert to help you either with the coding or identifying the materials that you need to come up with those projects. Please ask questions. We are waiting for those questions. So yeah, please ask questions. I can share one more project. I'm, I'm waiting for questions. Please ask questions. As I'm sharing more projects. If you've not yet started on your project, it's not yet too late to start. Just start and share with us your project so that uh, we can advise you accordingly. If the project can work during the competitions that we will host or if you'll uh, shift to another project or have other ideas, yeah, we're here to support. Okay, if nobody is asking questions, I can ask questions. So please, all those that are attending, tell us where you're attending from and what project are you thinking of coming up with? We are waiting.
So you can even decide to come up with a game on either your favorite subject that people play it and they learn different concepts, as you can see from this game that I was sharing with you. And since I'm not receiving any questions, we're going to end the session there. And thank you so much for attending. And please send any questions or send the ideas that you're planning to work on in our chat in chats or in the team where you are. Please try communicate from the IAN team so that we can help you where you need help. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening.